Ezra Levant, host of The Source here on Sun News Network, is in Alberta right now. He'll be taking part in tonight's live election results show, but first our cameras caught up with him at the ballot box as he cast his own vote. Welcome to Calgary. You know, I do my show from the studio in Toronto, but I actually live here in Calgary. I jet back and forth. It's all part of my plan to have the largest carbon footprint of any Canadian. Anyways, I live in a Calgary riding called Calgary Fish Creek. I actually live in the creek with the fishes themselves. I, to be very, very accurate, I live in a van down by the creek, but that's enough to be enumerated as a homeless person, and this pole three is the closest to the river, so this is where I'm gonna vote. The church is the Wood Green Presbyterian Church, which is my church, I'm Jewish, but you know, I like to think, what would Jesus do? And in this Alberta election, it's clear that Jesus would not be allowed to vote for Alison Redford because she's sort of anti-Christian folks. That's my editorial comment, but I actually think it's true. Anyways, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna vote not just for MLA. I'm actually one of the few Albertans who has an existing MLA from the the Wild Rose Party, an incumbent named Heather Forsyth, who crossed the floor from the Wild Rose, uh, from the PCs to the Wild Rose. But I actually get to vote for Senator. Alberta is the only province in Canada that allows its citizens to choose who represents it in the upper chamber. I'm pretty excited about that. There are three Senate positions to be filled, a bunch of candidates. So I'm voting for MLA and voting for Senator. That's something that only one in 10 Canadians, the lucky Albertans, get to do. Let's go on inside. I'm making history with this little pen. All right, where's the rhino candidate? Where's the rhino, rhino? No rhino candidate, no marijuana party. That narrows it down, all right. And now for Senate. Three choices. A little bit of history right there. Whew, that was awesome. I should vote more than once every four years, I'll tell you that. All right, he is always entertaining. We'll give him that. Okay, four party leaders vying for the province's top job, but only one will win the title as Premier. We are just hours away from finding out who got the most votes at the polls. The race for Premier has been a tight one since the start with incumbent PC leader Alison Redford and Wildrose leader Danielle Smith facing off from the get-go. The latest polls showing that Smith's Wildrose party could be on the verge of a, of a majority government, knocking the PCs from their top spot and changing the province's political landscape. The PCs have been in power for 41 years. Sun News contributor John Robson joins us now live from Calgary. Good to have you with us again, John. I want to talk history, if we can, for a minute. Albertans have a bit of a history in ending political dynasties, so shed some light on that, if you can, for us. Alberta politics is, is unique in Canada in this respect. People think Alberta's odd because it's right wing, but the to me, the oddest thing is that Albertans give parties a long run in power, and then when the party leaves the voters, they kick them out, and that's it. Alberta entered Canada in 1905. They gave the Liberals the Treasury benches from 1905 through 21. Then the Liberals were swept out by the United Farmers of Alberta, and they've never gotten back in. I think they've gotten as high as 16 opposition members, is the best they've done in the intervening 91 years. The United Farmers of Alberta ruled the province until the middle of the Great Depression. In 1935, they were turfed out by the Soak Reds so decisively they didn't elect an MLA that year and then they turned into an agricultural supply cooperative. That's how they've survived. The Soak Reds then took over and they were in charge until 1971. 25 years of that under Ernest Manning, Preston's father. Then the Soak Reds were turfed by the Tories in 71. They were reduced to 25 members, then four, then four, and then Bupkis. They've been running ever since, and all they do is annoy people by knocking on their doors. They haven't had an MLA. So the Tories are looking at the prospect if they lose. This isn't like the federal liberals who used to dominate the national politics, but once in a while they'd be sent to sort of cool their heels on the opposition benches, then come back in. If the Tories go, the chances are very good that they're gone permanently. Mm -hmm. So they've got a lot at stake here. Why might they lose? Why do you think this dynasty is ending today? because they've left the voters. Again, this is not a matter of Albertans having tried one approach to governing for a while and then said, you know what, I think we'd like to try something else. This is a party that lost touch, that 
believe that doesn't seem to like Alberta. I mean, they picked themselves a leader who has been one of these international do-gooders, a Joe Clark advisor, used to work for the UN, and apparently feels that if only Alberta were more like the international elite with whom she's accustomed to associating, it would be a less distasteful place. And this is deadly in Alberta politics. She didn't get that Albertans were angry with the party. She didn't get that they felt that the Tories had become too comfortable, too establishment, and too sort of eastern elitist. She insisted that Alberta Albertans ought to feel privileged to come to her and vote for her instead of feeling that she had to be where they are. And again, the fact that she's a former Joe Clark advisor is a classic reflection of this kind of mentality of you should feel grateful that I will let you vote for me. And that does not work in Alberta. I want to hear from you on which contested, which are the most contested battlegrounds, the hottest ones that you're going to be watching closest tonight. There are, there are so many, in fact, it's a little bit difficult. What seems to be the case is that Wild Joes will win quite easily in the rural areas, which make up almost half the province, which means that the... Con the PCs must do well. They've got to hold off Wild Rose in Calgary, particularly in the more affluent ridings. But indeed, the, the Premier is in danger of losing her own seat uh, in, in southeast Calgary. They've also got to fight off the also-rans in Edmonton, which is more left-leaning. They must take voters from both the Liberals and the NDP in order to at least hold a sizable constituency. I mean, everybody's going to be nervous about almost everything, including Wild Rose getting the vote out. Can a new party manage that end of things? well but it's really going to be a matter of watching Calgary downtown and Edmonton downtown to see if they're if the Tories can hold off Wild Rose in Calgary and hold off the Liberals and the NDP in Edmonton all right we'll certainly be watching it as will our viewers right here on Sun News John Robson thanks so much my pleasure